everyone, Kaylee, your friendly neighborhood hairstylist here, and today I'm gonna talk about my journey with my fine straight hair. <laughs> Slash my tips based on my journey with fine straight hair. So, hmm. <laughs> A few videos ago, I answered y'all's assumptions about me, and it included showing pictures of me in high school. He, <laughs> that's on the internet forever. Real excited about that. But I got a lot of questions in the comments on how I transitioned from having this like flat, heavy, unstyled hair to where I am now. And I thought, you know what? Let's actually talk about that because I've learned a whole lot and I do know a whole lot of girls that have similar hair to mine that have similar struggles that I've had so let's talk through it let's talk about how to get more volume more lift all that kind of stuff in your hair especially when it's fine and this is especially addressing my struggles as someone with fine straight hair but I'm sure some of these will help you no matter your hair type so let's get into it so to talk about my journey, we must first talk about where I've been and my hair in those pictures from high school. So if I was to put myself back in my high schooler shoes and describe what my hair was like, I would say it was oily, it was heavy, it was not stylable slash unstyled, and it was flat. And so I'm gonna go through and we're just gonna kind of break down every single one of those, okay? Okay, so number one, it was heavy. Girl, was it heavy. <laughs> because I had long hair. I don't think I have pictures of it at its longest. I mean, it was like down past my butt. I would sit on it. It was a thing. Um, and you know, I was really proud of the length for a long time and I really liked it. But what I did eventually realize is that it super limited what I could do styling wise. And that's why as part of my hair journey getting to where you guys see me now, I ended up losing some length because I was figuring out that first of all, it was super long and super heavy, so it caused headaches and I didn't enjoy that at all. Second, I couldn't do a lot of the other hairstyles that I you know, saw in the world that I wanted to be able to do on myself because my hair was too long for it. And third, I couldn't get the lift because I had too much length. Basically, you kind of have to think of it when you have really long hair like that, it's like having weights at the bottom of your hair. So if you also have fine hair and you're trying to curl it, you got the weights pulling it back down, like maybe pulling it to be very loose curls or even almost straight. And I realized that I was sacrificing all of those things to have the length. And I was like, you know what? If it's length or being able to style and have lift and have volume, I'd rather have the lift and the volume. So I ended up cutting my hair from waist length to bra strap length, which is pretty much where it stayed since then. And I've honestly never looked back. It really helped me as far as the versatility of my hairstyling and being able to get curls in my hair, being able to get lift in my hair. It was definitely a change, but one that was very much worth it for me because for me, I really prioritize being able to style my hair in lots of different ways rather than having all of the length. Second thing that's different in my hair then versus now is that my hair was very oily and very greasy. Here are some things that I have learned that have helped me with that. First things first, dry shampoo is your friend. Actually, no, dry shampoo is your best friend. You must use it. Um, and not only do you wanna use a dry shampoo, if you're dealing with fine, flat, oily hair, I recommend going for a texturizing dry shampoo because not only do you need the oil absorption, but you need that texture to provide the extra lift. So my favorite one currently is the IGK First Class Charcoal Detox Dry Shampoo. This stuff will erase all kinds of postponing your shower sins. It is so, so good. But any other ones that are, you know, texturizing and help to absorb oil are gonna be good. And the reason that I really recommend texturizing, especially at your root, is that when you have fine, flat hair, your hair is already sleeker than most people's, so to get your hair just to look normal or look like most people's, and I'm just like really using the air quotes here, you actually have to use texturizers to get that little bit of lift. So even on clean hair, using a texturizing spray or a texturizing dry shampoo can be super helpful for getting that lift. Trick number two that I've learned is that I like to get my roots very, very clean, but then really, really moisturize my ends because you typically, when you have fine hair, are going to have like drier, you know, frizzier, staticier, whatever your ends, 
and then oily flat roots. So you need to get the roots clean of all the texturizing and dry shampoo and oil that's going on there. So for me, I typically go for things that are more cleansing on the scalp. The two that I really love at the drugstore right now are the Kristen S Micellar Water Shampoo and the Herbal Essences Micellar Water Shampoo. They both break down stuff in the hair very, very well without overly stripping it. The Kristen S one is a little bit more hydrating if you need that. And then I just focus on super moisturizing my ends because if your scalp is oily, that means that this little area that's getting oily, it's already moisturized. You don't have to worry about it. You just have to get it clean. You wanna moisturize everything else that's not getting touched by the oil. And finally, this is something that I've learned and very much enjoy, bleached hair absorbs oil better than hair that has not been damaged because it's more porous, so it up the oil. And uh, I basically know that it's time for me to get my hair color touched up when I can't go more than two days between washing my hair because the, the healthy new hair has come in. I'm not saying that everybody who has oily hair needs to go out there and get highlights, I'm just saying it's, it's an added benefit, <laughs> and it's one that I very much enjoy. Okay, now to the big one. Number three, my hair didn't style. Ugh, is that not the problem of people with like virgin, super healthy hair of any, any thickness? It doesn't style. <sighs> Here's some things I've learned. Take as many or as few as you want. Number one, damage is actually your friend. A little bit, a little bit of damage. Don't go out there and try to like bleach your own hair three times level of damage, just like a little bit. It helps your hair to hold things better. It helps it to be a little bit more voluminous because the individual strands have swelled. It's, it's actually very helpful. So if you've been considering highlights or some kind of color service, just know that it's going to help your hair hold the style better. And even if you want to be brunette or dark brown, anything like that, you can always add highlights just to add some texture and some dimension. And if it's that close to your hair color, you don't even have to get it touched up that often. So it doesn't have to be a big time and money commitment. It can just be every now and then just to like give your hair dimension and to give it the ability to style more easily. Just an option, just a thought I'm gonna put out there. Number two, if your hair is super duper healthy, okay? Like, not mine. Very, very healthy, undamaged, untreated hair. For a special occasion, when you really want your hair to hold the curl, I recommend light to very, very minimal conditioner, then no leave-in conditioners, no oils, just go straight in with the curling iron. Because if you've got extra water and extra humectants, held in your hair, it's just gonna, it's just gonna relax. And I'm saying that only to people with super duper healthy hair, cause your hair can handle it. Not mine, yours. <laughs> um, so if you find yourself in that really healthy, virgin, you know, straight hair place, you can do the under moisturizing because your hair can handle it and because it will help it to hold the curl better. Number three, mousse is greater than hairspray. I will shout it from the rooftops. <laughs> because, okay, Mousse is meant to go on your hair when it's wet and it is meant to move and to flex and do all these little things. Hairspray is not. <laughs> and when you start loading up hairspray on fine hair, you're just, you're creating the worst, like a, a train wreck on your hair. And I see it happen so often where people are like, okay, I want my curls to hold, firm hold hairspray and go. And their hair just ends up being like crunchy plastic and it doesn't look good, and then it gets all in a giant mat, and like, no, no, put the hairspray down. What I recommend is that you put in a firm hold hairspray while your hair is wet, and you can blow dry it, you can let it air dry if you want, but then when you hit it with the hot tool, you're activating the little holding molecules. For Just for ease's sake, we're gonna call them holding molecules. It, it activates them and helps them to hold their shape better. So essentially, you're doing the same thing as adding in a hairspray, but it's significantly more touchable and I find it significantly more effective. So it's something that I really, 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 really recommend. And then if you want to throw on a flexible, light hold hairspray on top of that, be my guest, but do not saturate your hair with a stronghold hairspray and hope that that is going to be touchable and movable and pretty. It's not, it's just not. And we're still going. Number four, because your hair is absolutely going to loosen after you curl it, go ahead and anticipate it. Like anticipate your opponent. Go with a smaller barrel so that when it loosens up, it goes to the size that you actually wanted. So for me, 
this style curl right here, this was a one inch iron. And you can see this has loosened up a whole lot. If I was curling someone's hair that like really takes a curl well, I could use a one and a quarter inch iron to get this. But no, we go a little smaller and then we get the results that we want. So a good rule of thumb is like, don't fight it. Don't get mad at your hair that it loosens up. Just go ahead and work with it because that will get you better results than just like hating life and trying to recurl pieces of hair over and over again. And finally, number five, I learned the benefits of curling my hair. Now I get a lot of comments about how I like to curl or wave my hair before I do tutorials on it or before I do a hairstyle. There's a reason for that. First of all, it gives you volume. Whenever you have these waves that are going diagonally, it creates a wider silhouette than something that's going straight. So if I want volume and I want lift, getting those curls in there is going to give that to me. And if that's something that you want as well, that's a way to get it. Additionally, it makes your braids more bubbly because if you're working with straight hair and you try to put that hair into a braid and then you try to pull it apart, it's not gonna look the same. Imagine that you're working with like a piece of maybe like a thicker plastic cord that it's straight and you bend it, but it just wants to spring back to straight. That's basically what your hair, when it's straight, is doing in a braid. You're trying to, you know, pull it out to get it into this beautiful, like, bubbly shape, but it keeps just springing back into this, you know, more narrow, less bubbly, less voluminous shape. So the easy way to fix that is to curl your hair so it's already in those kind of crescent shapes, and then when you go to fluff the hair out, it just springs into place. And that's really how I get my braids as voluminous and big as they are, which is important when you have fine hair because you have to like fake the extra hair you don't have, is getting those curls and the hair first so that it can spring up into place and make those really pretty crescents instead of being all elongated and stretched out and like a little bit more wimpy looking. Finally, let's talk about flat hair. Now, all of the things I already talked about are going to help with flat hair, so. Let's just like include all of those bullet points as one right here. Listen to the first part of the video. But to add to that, texturizing products are your friends. And I talked about that a little bit, but because you have fine, heavy, flat hair, you need extra texture just to get to that normal point, just to get to that like movable, tousled point. And then if you wanna look texturized, you go even beyond that. And so it's kind of fine to think of texturizing spray not necessarily as something that is going to texturize your hair, as something that's just going to like give you that lift and that volume that you want. Um, you're gonna get there before you get to like texturized, beachy, dry texture looking, if that makes sense. Also, and I kind of already touched on this, curling your hair is your friend. Because if you have curls, even up here at the root, even though my curls have loosened up significantly, it's giving me this lift, whereas otherwise it would be like this. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it's not what I'm going for. And finally, pomade is better than oil for holding and taming fine hair. The reason I say that is that oil always loosens up fine hair. So if you're trying to curl it and you've got it all curled and the ends just look maybe just a little bit like here, let me try to do this. All right, the ends just look a little frizzy. This is typically because there's lots of friction and the hair is kind of rubbing up against each other and it kind of goes crazy. The first thing I would do to this is just to comb it out a little bit. <laughs> and then I would add in a pomade or a light hold gel because that creates a cast to hold the hair in the shape that you've curled it in. So you're not gonna lose the curl that you've put in there, but it also keeps the hair from rubbing and frictioning up against itself and creating a frizz ball mess. So you get the smoothness and the definition you want without sacrificing the curls that you put into your hair. My only caveat to that is if your ends are damaged and they're already dry looking, like they look like they need to be conditioned, just on the ends, just on the little tiny part that looks like it needs it, you could put a little bit of oil. But I wouldn't go running that through all of your hair. That's my only caveat, but I think most of you guys, if you're in that like virgin, straight, shiny hair category, yeah, just skip the oil. And I think that is a whole lot of the journey that I've gone through from high school to now and the way that I've changed the way I style my hair and how I get the baseline texture that I use for creating my hairstyles because you do need to have a good base to get started and there are some good tips that you can use as you're styling to make sure you preserve all the lift and the texture that you've given yourself. So I hope that this helps. If you guys have more questions around this, leave them in the comments. I will be going through and responding, but also if you have any more tips that I didn't talk about, I would love to hear them and you can leave those in the comments as well. 
If my hair looks a tiny bit tired in today's video, it's cause it is. I have been filming all week working on a massive video that I was gonna post today, but it needed another week. So guys, come back next Saturday to see what I have been putting my hair through. Oh my gosh, you're gonna love it. It's so much, it's so much. It might be the biggest video I've ever done. So I'm excited for you guys to see it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video today talking about styling tips and uh, I really hope you enjoy next week's video. <laughs> if you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to hit the like button to help support me and my channel. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button to join the Bradaholic family here on Kaylee Melissa. And I will see all of you guys next Saturday with an epic video. Okay, see you then. Mwah. Bye. Sprite a tree and grow coconuts. When's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't mess with that way when he's on the breakaway. And the tapestry here on my skin is the map of the victories I win. Look at me, I make everything happen. Just look at my mouth. We just tick it, tick it, tick it. Hey. And I say, except you're welcome. All right, we got this singing portion of the video done early. <laughs>